Hey, it's me Roland, and this is Bilingual Analytics, where you can learn a lot about Microsoft Power BI. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to migrate source data saved on a local network drive to OneDrive for an existing Power BI report, and talk about the benefits of doing such thing. It is the first episode of a video series where I try to find the best possible data source to use, both from a performance perspective and from a business continuity point of view. This means that I'm on a hunt for a data source that provides quick refresh times and the best options to share data within the organization. If you don't want to miss further episodes, make sure to subscribe to the channel. While you at it, a quick click on the like button wouldn't hurt either. Thanks. I must be as objective as possible in these videos. To ensure objectivity, I'm going to use the exact same report, the same dataset, and the same PC to measure the different connectors. As a result of that, it could be considered an A-B testing, where the only variant is going to be the Power BI connector type. First of all, I measure report refresh speed using Phil Cmark's Visualize Your Power BI Refresh Report. It is a great tool to have, and Phil made it available for all of us with a tutorial on how to run it, and more importantly, how to analyze the results. Links are in the description below. Thanks, Phil. Please keep in mind that I'm going to use my dummy dataset that I created specifically for this video series and I will use it in all demos to ensure consistency. As always, your mileage may vary, but I reckon it's a pretty good method to objectively measure refresh time at my end. Secondly, when it comes to business continuity, I'm going to focus on data availability. One of the best ways to do that is by measuring ease of access to the data from report creator's point of view. It is quite important to have clean data available, so other report creators don't have to go through the same data cleansing exercise again and again and again. We all like to reuse data sets. Additionally, it is possible that people leave or switch jobs, so businesses must prepare for that option as well. If a business critical report is only available on someone's laptop, that's a huge risk and a massive no-no. And lastly, I will share my experience on how easy or difficult it is to implement the solution covered in the video. It will be a bit more challenging to objectively measure that bit, given that we all have different backgrounds and skill sets. So for this point, I'm probably only going to list pros and cons. Based on that, you can decide if you want to go ahead with a certain option or not. Now that we have our ground rules set, it is time to head over to my PC and see what it takes to move from a local source to OneDrive. I'm using a star or snowflake schema because I know that the most important thing to optimize when it comes to refresh times and report speed is the data model itself. When it comes to the data, I'm picking up Excel files from a network drive for the dimension tables and using a folder as a source for my fact sales table. Following Phil's blog post, I was able to trace report refresh timings for this Power BI report connected to Excel files on a network and what you see right now on the screen is the result. Managed to refresh the report within 2 minutes and 59 seconds. My fact table and calculated calendar table taking the most time from the refresh. At this stage, it's also important to mention that I connected to a network hosted by my friend just to allow me to simulate a scenario that many of us go through in real life. I also try to connect to data stored on my NAS, however, as it sits on my local network, I realized that it wouldn't be a true or real comparison to what's happening in real life. In most companies, data needs to go through a VPN or come from the other side of the planet from a company data warehouse. If you want to see speed that can be achieved with local files, have a look at the blog post. I added the link to the description below. Now it is time to upload everything to OneDrive or SharePoint, as these two are technically the same. I moved the whole monthly sales report folder and all the dimension tables to Bilingual Analytics OneDrive, 
So now I just need to swap connections. Let me show you how. I'm going to start with the customer dimension table because we only have to adjust it a little to point to a OneDrive folder. When we connect to an Excel file, our first two lines of code, the source and the second one, are going to reference the file location and the sheet. All the other steps are more or less transformation steps. I could just easily rewrite the code to what it should be, but instead of that, I'm going to show you how to get there on your own. I'm going to start from a blank query and only paste here a single line of code. After that, we will go through the steps using the GUI. Now I have the structure of my OneDrive folders. I know that my data sits in documents. So I need to click on that. Within the documents folder, today we are going to look at the report refresh subfolder. And as we are starting with the customer table, I'm going to select the customer binary file. From that file, I need the first sheet, so I click on the tables for values customer sheet. And here it is. This is what the row import from Excel would also give us. So instead of doing the same transformation steps here, let's copy paste the M code from query one to customer's query. Remember, we only need to replace the first two lines of code with the newly acquired M lines. After we point all the dimension tables to OneDrive, we can focus on the sales table. Luckily, it's not rocket surgery either. More or less, we follow the same process for the main query, but we have to make sure that the sample file query is pointing to the OneDrive location as well. Let's do it. Great, we still have our data model with all the relationships. And if we go back to the report, we can see all report pages. This means that we successfully migrated our report to OneDrive. As a final step, I used fields method to trace my refresh speed, and you can see the results here. Refresh ran in two minutes and five seconds, so really close to the original setup with the network drive. All right, so we moved our report source data to OneDrive, making it readily available for others within the team as well. As we saw, the relative refresh times were similar, and even though OneDrive was a bit faster overall, it would be premature to say that it is always better or quicker. What I noticed throughout the preparation for this video is the rose red per second heavily depends on the speed of my internet connection. One time I was able to shave off roughly 30 seconds with the OneDrive connector. So when it comes to report refresh speed, I would say it heavily depends on these factors. One, speed of internet. I think it's quite obvious. Two, distance from the source meaning that if your remote server sits far away from you, data will need to travel a lot more distance, hence reducing refresh speed. And three, speed of the source. While some large-scale enterprises probably have better optimized data warehouses, my friend only runs a smaller size operation, so it's not a huge priority for him. All in all, when I moved some reports in my day job to OneDrive, I saw similar results. 
OneDrive was on pair or slightly quicker than a report on a network drive using VPN. Now that we have covered report refresh times, it's time to talk about business continuity and data availability. As soon as we move local files to the cloud, it improves both of that. With that small step, we can make data more accessible for the whole organization. And it's not just any data. We're talking about clean data for others. Therefore, we can limit the number of times the users have to reinvent the wheel. Additionally, if our network doesn't have version controlling or archiving capabilities, a cloud service partner can manage that aspect as well. Just make sure that you select a provider who takes good care of your data and protects it. One more thing, once I connected all queries in my Power BI report to OneDrive, I can run refreshes straight from the service. There is no need to refresh the model from Power BI Desktop. I think it is a great advantage as the report is no longer tied to local resources and you can refresh the report from any place, anytime. The only thing that I can think of as a potential issue is the speed of your internet. However, I would not consider this as a serious issue, especially not in a business world. And there is an important thing to remember. Do not use OneDrive Personal, as it will be linked to your personal account. Always use OneDrive with either a business account or a shared account. And finally, let's talk about ease of migration. As you saw it, nothing super duper, duper, through, ooh, super duper difficult was included in the whole process. I had to upload files to OneDrive location, which could be automated. And if there is a need to change something in the dimension tables or add new records, it's also possible either with Excel Online or the desktop app. After the upload was ready, I had to adjust the first couple of lines of code within Power Query to point it to OneDrive rather than a network drive. But it was the same for all queries. I reckon this could be replicated within a business day, given you don't have super large data sets to upload. Now it is up to you to decide if you like this approach and whether you are going to replicate this in your day job. I'm going to record a few more videos about data source options, so either come back next week or check out the dedicated playlist for all the other tools that I help you to explore. If there is any particular Power BI data connector that you want me to cover, make sure to leave a comment below so I can add them to the playlist. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that all of it made sense and you learned something new today. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel on your way out or before you watch another episode like these ones. See ya!